Stephen Adumche brought magic to church. Prophet Stephen Adumche Dua of the Philadelphia movement just brought sorcery to church and it must be addressed. Hold on, we will do the new year pleasantries at the end of this video, so let's go into the matter quickly. So I kept getting messages on Monday that Prophet Stephen Adumche has said something and it must be addressed with immediacy. Now before that I had seen it a video of him on TikTok going viral and people talking about it. I think that was the Sunday evening and I was pondering on the things I heard in that video. I decree and declare Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. I am an angel of approach to no Pharisee. This is my true name. Jesus Lord. Hand that down to thy servant. Hey. Jehovah Nisi. <laughs> Jehovah Blood. Jesus Lord. Jehovah Jiri. Amen. That I'm the method of a pillar. I declare. Amen. Now this sounded fishy to me when I heard it and it didn't sound like anything in the Bible as well. I went on Google quickly and I couldn't find anything. Now why was it fishy? I have watched and reviewed many videos of Adum Chedua. I have never seen him say he's an angel. Although he has been called the voice of God, the sword of God, um, the eighth generational prophet and many other names, I never heard him or the people say he's an angel. Now, the second thing that made it fishy is that he actually sounded like he was mentioning certain names and entities that should be known or that is available somewhere. And he was not just speaking gibberish or some people would say speaking in tongues. Because if you listen, he said, I am an angel of Aphrosolophalus. And he continued to say, that is my true name handed down to thy servant. So this was like something that he was saying and it looked to me like something that has been memorized. Then I was wondering, and this is my third question, where in the Bible was the name as the one he's mentioning handed down? Now at this point, I had to wait. I had to wait to see whether anyone knows anything about this because this was never familiar at all. Then the next day, boom, I saw a comment that gave me an idea. I got in the comment section of the video, that same video that I saw, and somebody had commented something about the video. Now, I wanted to share a screenshot, but the video has been taken down. Apparently, it was posted by a member who has already been posting videos of Prophet Stephen Arum Chiedua, who thought it was a powerful prayer people should be saying amen to. And then, looking at the comments, I think they realized that this thing is going south, so they decided they have to take it down. The comment I saw read something like this. That is a line from the recitation of the boneless ritual. The video that had the comment has been deleted, but that was all that I needed. For the next 24 hours, I went on the internet to find everything I could lay my hands on, and this is the summary of what I got. The boneless ritual is also known as the preliminary invocation. Now on this channel, we have done angelic invocation and all that, so this should bring a thought. It is a ritual of Western ceremonial magic generally used as an invocation of the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel. It was introduced as such by the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. We will talk about the Golden Dawn and their kind of magic soon. But right now, let's look at the ritual then. Tell me if anything sounds familiar like what you heard from the man. Now this is it from the top. The preliminary invocation. The invocation of the heart girt with a serpent or the boneless ritual. So there's a, a heart girt with a serpent. D I invoke the boneless one. D that did create the earth and the heavens. Do I need to recite all these things? No. So let me take you to the place where it sounded familiar. He says, Thou art Osoronophiris, whom no man has seen at any time. Then he will go on and mention and mention a lot of things. The invocation is gone. He said, Thou did make the female and the male. Thou did produce the seed and the fruit. Thou did form men to love. Thou did form men to love one another and to hate one another. Then, look at this part. Now, there is a variation I've seen with different recitation of the boneless ritual. And the names are the things that vary here. The name here is what varies. Look at it. It says, I am. Ank Fen Konsu Thy Prophet. So I don't know how they use it, but then I've seen two of this and the name seems to change. I am thy, so I am Dash, thy prophet, unto whom thou did commit thy mysteries, the ceremonies of Kem. 
thou did produce the moist and dry that which nourished all created life. Now this is it. Hear thou me, for I am the angel of Paphro Osorono Ferris. This is thy true name, handed down to the prophet of Ken. Now in the other variation it read, I am Moshe, thy prophet, unto whom thou did commit thy mysteries, the ceremonies of Israel. Then it comes down. Thou did produce the moist and the dry and that which nourished all created life. Then the part that um, Adumche, Prophet Adumche mentioned, he said, Hear thou me, for I am the angel of Paphro Osoronophiris. This is thy true name, handed down to the prophets of Israel. Hear me. But one thing that I saw here in the recitation is that it says, Hear me and make all spirits subject, subject unto me, so that every spirit of the firmament and of the ether upon the earth and under the earth on dry land and in water, of welling air and of rushing fire, and every spell and the scourge of God may be obedient unto me. I invoke thee, the terrible and invisible God. Now, this has nothing to do with Christianity because in Christianity, we don't invoke God. In fact, we are not supposed to even invoke angels. So it will keep going on and on and on and on. So this is the exact quotation from the boneless ritual. Now, many people didn't hear him where they thought he said, I am the angel of Afro Sonophalis. But he actually said, Paphro Osorono Ferris. But because he was speaking very fast, they didn't get it. That is it. Now, the question is, how does a man of God quote verbatim a line or two from a book of invoking spirits? Literally, this is a book for magical art and sorcery. How and why? How does this happen? Could that be a coincidence? I always want to come from the place of giving people the benefit of the doubt. Like in the sword video, you saw how I approached it. Now, the second thing is, why did he mention that name from a magical book that most people don't know and haven't heard before which is nowhere near the bible and it is used in magic why would he mention it now it has taken me more than three days to learn to mention the name right and i'm still fumbling even as and now how does it get so well even in the heat of the moment where he's talking and he's in the motion now if you are in the philadelphia movement and one who is interested in kingdom matters this should be a matter of concern to you listen because already the name Jesus is being replaced with Adum Nyami in your fellowship or in your ministry or in you. He says it's not a church. It's being replaced. The name Jesus is being replaced with Adum Nyami and Philadelphia Bofu has taken the place of Jesus Christ. So everything is now being done in the name of Adum Nyami and Philadelphia Bofu. So think about it. What is actually happening there? I don't think the man is ignorant. Don't think it's a mistake. Because listen. For the search I did before I came across this, this cannot be a mistake and it cannot just be something that he just said and has never seen it and cannot be able to say it fluently like this. Until today, it is difficult for us to still get it right, but the man got it right and that should give us a lot of information about him. I don't think he's ignorant. He has actually been to places and he has done things and he mentioned it in many of his messages. 20 and I've been a micro me fit as before 20. Yes, the men school time in our senior school for your name, so I a saint boy. I didn't hear a missing me, she shad. And to not me, pebri be me, me pebri be me. Okay, to me, chipping my mother, what I'm a mother, I could lose nice as I want my mammy chipping while she knew. Aza, I'm sure be a. Me me se shi ni ho. Oti, saata mo ma me wata insu fra wana do twelve o'clock na boys boys yako yako fra ma me wata. Se ya si bribi wo ho dia dia ya unhuno mu. Swa unu. Ano ne akot. Ano na na me 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 nsi a nyada in. Eh nuru ho. Yeti ya nyu. Ya ma wungu dem. It will age be a wood dry. Oh, one enemy, dear one. Now, what Nigeria? That began now. Okay. Sabra Coraponi, a neat bridia, a can or cot, Nadia, why a yakan, a lodge. Lodge, yes. Secret society for. And so no, Sabra, no, I can say for near Titru for Uncle, and no one can a man, young woman would have. Maybe a rubber be a bow. Macobe, a beer, city, say a sibibia, Macoaba. If not, how careless can you be to mention this in church? 
Listen, open your eyes, family. Open your eyes. Now, what is the Golden Dawn? <laughs> it was a secret society devoted to the study and practice of occult hermeticism and metaphysics during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And what they call magic is not the trick you see on TV where somebody will pick a card and just twist it. No, it was the use of spirit and mediums to affect or change things or make things happen. Aleister Crowley, do you know this name? He was an English occultist, philosopher, and ceremonial magician who founded the religion of Telema and he identified himself as a prophet and trusted with guiding humanity into the aeon of Horus in the early 20th century. Now, he got some of his training from this occult society, the Golden Dawn. Now look at it, he is an occultist who sees himself as a prophet to guide humanity into the age or the aeon of Horus in the early 20th century. Does it sound like something familiar to you, a prophet who is an occultist? You see, don't take these things for granted because someone also says he is the prophet for the whole world to teach things that has never been taught and he is going to lead this generation for about 500 years and all that. But even if you do not believe my words, then I want you to believe because of the works you see me perform. For everything you are seeing and witnessing today, the pastors have never read that level. The prophets have never got it to this level before. There isn't any single church on this earth that has got it to this magnitude before. To show and differentiate the occult from performing magic, the one you see on stage, Alistair Crowley said, Their magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. Basically, changing things according to your will by involving spirit to make things conform to what you desire. Interesting interesting now interestingly you can find this very recitation in a book that contains many recitations and rituals that are used to invoke spirit and demons i don't want to mention any book here because a lot of people are weak in the faith and they would want to go search them out and will try them out listen don't do it it is not christianity it is the way of the evil one and it's the way of deception an advice to a young minister out there so many things are happening in our generation and you must be very very vigilant or else you will be deceived and you will not be aware many of the people you call puppets may have different faith and practice that you have no idea about so be very careful out there when you listen to them like jesus said take heed what you hear 
pay attention to what you listen to. Don't just say, oh, it is a slip of tongue or you just say something. Many have departed from the faith and they are still in the pulpit. They have given heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. They are now consulting with various mediums and books and that's what they are using to teach the people or that's actually where they are practicing their miracles and the things that they are doing on daily basis from. The Bible is just a cover. Is it surprising that in my first video of um, Adum Che, Prophet Adum Che, I noticed he was using materials outside the Bible? If you have been on this channel, you will know it. I just pointed it. I said, this thing is not in the Bible. He got these things from somewhere. And actually, it's deeper than I thought. Hold on. You are going into excesses. Now, moving on to the next wrong thing. The same problem is reflected in trying to teach on angels that don't exist in the Bible. You mentioned Uriel and Raphael. Where do you get them from? That means you are clearly going outside of scripture. If you do that, you are getting into excesses and error and you will soon be labeled as a false prophet if you don't stop it. Why do you have to teach about reincarnation and purgatory? These are all falsehood rising as a result of preaching one's ideas or one's revelation other than what has been revealed to us in scripture. Now, there's no message on the origin of God in the Bible. There's no message on reincarnation in the Bible. There's no message on Uriel and Raphael. The moment you go on this path, you become dangerous and one that is prone to errors and people must be aware of you. So this is my candid opinion. If it is possible, with immediate effect, get rid of all those videos and leave only the ones that can be substantiated by scripture. Never disregard scripture. Don't take this message that is coming to you for granted. Don't go into areas scripture is silent about. Be determined to stay faithful to the Lord and his word period don't try to go outside scripture stay in the confines of scripture now since this is actually my first attempt at looking at your materials i want to say let's give you the benefit of the doubt some of these things could be because of human errors and because of our growth process and because we are still learning a lot of things along the line but the fact is the fact many of the people who have gone ahead are using many books and materials and have the bible as just a cover to be deceived so beware our generation is doing exactly the opposite of what happened in the Bible. In Acts 19.19, 19, the Bible says, Many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the prices of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. And so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. You see, when people received Jesus Christ, they saw the power in the name of Jesus Christ. But today... People have Jesus Christ and they are consulting with other books in their mind and they've been taught that Jesus is not enough. The name Jesus is not enough. They must learn astrology. They must learn magical art. These are all forms of sorcery and witchcraft that are being introduced into the body of Christ, which you must be aware of. Listen to them and see the word they preach. You listen to Prophet Adumchi, empty message just to glorify himself and to put feathers in their car. And in their churches today, they are literally worshipping him. And they see him as inerrant and infallible. And it is not just in Philadelphia, it is in many places. You check the comments they are going to leave under this video, you will see where they belong. You will see how they have been bewitched and they have been indoctrinated. Yes, if this thing doesn't disturb you and make you alarm to search out your faith and to study properly so that you can run to safety and you come here to insult. Come on, the insults, they are nothing. The period where you give your whole self to the man of God and you throw yourself into his hands and he determines your future is long past. Though. Today, if you do that, you are going to be deceived. And don't be watching miracles and say that, oh, he has miracles. This person has been healed. This person has been delivered. Listen, in the last days, the deception is going to be in the line of teachings and also in the line of miracles. In Matthew 24 verse 4, the Bible says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take it that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. Are you seeing it? Matthew 24, 24. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So false prophets will show signs and wonders. So stop using the before and after video as proof of the man of God being authenticity. Stop using the testimonies and the miracles. They are good. They are necessary, but they are not sufficient to determine whether a man of God is genuine or authentic. False Christ and prophets 
also have miracles. So beware. If after all these things you want to fight, instead of consider the evidence shown and advise yourself, I want you to know you are being bewitched. And you must be praying that God will open your eyes so that you can see properly. If not, you are going to be led even in a bigger, bigger way astray. Child of God, stick to the word of God and develop a training year to notice falsehood. I hope this helped you. This is Pastor Gideon and this was Kingdom Matters. Happy New Year and welcome to 2023. The year is going to be better. It's going to be greater by the grace of God. This year is the year of love. And I believe the greatest love we can show to ourselves is to preach and to stick to truth. Stay blessed. I'll see you in the next video. Shalom.